feel like they hurt Cassidin, or hurt Peke rather with the Cassidin. Lissandra ban as well for the other solo lane, so they're going to be getting that out right away. But Vayne, Uzi's not getting his Vayne, but will they ban Twitch? Like D-Man said, it was left open in that last pick ban. I don't know if they need to do that right now. Royals banning, as far as they're concerned, is just Lissandra Cassidy, and I really wonder if they're going to throw a third ban at Fnatic, or if they're just going to go with something like Shen again to stop Soaz having a safety. I think the Leona actually was probably quite a key pick from uh, Elsa. I think he played really solidly throughout the laning phase, and I think they need to watch out for that again, especially because um, Uzi didn't pick up Cleanse. He picked up the barrier, so he's very susceptible to that CC from Leona. So you need to watch for that, because I think Fnatic can pull it out strong. Yeah, and last game, Royal picked Jax into whatever Fnatic had to throw at them. The first pick is going to be so telling right here, because counterpicking the mid lane for Whites worked extremely well against Peke. But at the same time, the mid lane so far in the World Championship, since it's been so assassin focused this far, does seem to be defaulting back to just the Gragas and the Orianna. And Orianna was so dominant in that last game, it's a really strange first pick, but there we, I think they're going to do it. Yeah, we can relate to Faker as well when he was playing the Orianna. It was a solid pick for him as well. And it seems that the Mendelians are just defaulting back to this Orianna. It's very strong lane presence, got great utility for the team. And it's interesting to see the first pick coming out there. Is he going to respond with a, a Fizz again? I'm not so sure. It didn't work out yeah. before. It's in the balance here. They have all the time in the world to wait. Like we said yesterday, mids were getting down to 8th, ninth pick within the order, finding their way. Shen not being banned. These teams going a bit more orthodox. We're seeing them focus out pack A. We see the vein and the Annie gone. They are respecting Tabe's Annie play. So we're going to see what Fnatic actually taking quite a bit here to lock in. It is interesting, actually. Like, Peke is quite a diverse champion pool. He could pull out something like a Diana. We've seen that before out of him. He could go for that, try and surprise um, White a little bit as possible. But the Ari has been left open this team. So I think, yeah, Ari's a solid pick by Peke. Lots of roaming. Yeah. And the Aatrox as well, as we said before. Picks up the Aatrox. I think it's a lot less skill shot dependent. He'll have the impact that he wanted to have yeah. anyway. I think as far as Royals going, they're just playing almost generalist right now. Because Orianna is your kind of safe all-around mid laner. Renekton has been first picked so much in the Chinese LPL that they are completely safe picking that into absolutely anything. Renekton was banned in the first game, so they're still picking this one in blind. Fnatic effectively has to come up with a counter right now to Royals just safe champions. I'm curious to see if uh, we see Soaz go to a Rumble or a Cannon. I think he could fall back onto that, for example. Um, Renekton wins the lane matchup actually there, but I think as far as Team Comp goes, I think it might help them then. We need to watch out though for Fnatic. They need to start the strong lane presence. They didn't have it last time. It was really, the game fell apart actually from their laning phase, which we didn't expect. So I think he really needs to find a strong lane that he's comfortable with against the Renekton. And with comfortable lanes, we see a lot of Zyras coming out, which we haven't throughout these two teams. It's been more engage, get yourself into the fight. We haven't seen the safe play, and we may have to see that coming in here from Fnatic this game. Right now, they have two divers looking at a third. This could be pretty scary for them. Maybe they go that's, for the same thing. That's a very interesting pick. Yeah. There's Ash, Zach has a lot of synergy with an Ari follow-up later, but that's a very, very risky lane to pull off the Ash. Are they going to combo up with the Ash Zyra lane later on? I don't know. I feel like Yellowstar would like to default to a, a Leona, especially if they've locked in the Sona now. Leona would be really yeah. good against Orianna, really good against Sona. So. But who runs Leona Ash is the it's, real question. Royal no can does. just kind it's of sit into this, and the fact that Corky wasn't picked by Fnatic I feel like Uzi just defaults back into that, knowing his vein is banned away. Maybe he could play Caitlyn against Dash, but as far as just loading damage and knowing Royal is so good at grouping up and forcing mm -hmm. team fights, I'd expect this Corky here to combo up with Sona. Tabe doesn't even show that much of a proficiency for Zyra. He's played support Annie and support Sona. The instantaneous or close to instantaneous group <laughs> crowd control is so good for him. And even though Fnatic seems to want to go for Zyra, I like the Sona. Yeah, but it's interesting as he did pick up the Ezreal and yeah. not the, the Corky. Maybe he just wants a bit more uh, maneuverability in the lane. If Yellowstar does pick up a skill shot champion like Leona, like Zyra, gives him a bit more versatility in the lane. And I think the lane advantage goes to Royal in this situation. Even though Ash Zyra is a strong lane, it's more for the team fights like uh, later on. And then the picks as well they can create with Ash and Ari. There's, there's so many pick opportunities later on, in which the Fnatic is very renowned for. So I think that's going to help them a lot. See what they have for each other. Something that always plays in my mind now that Royal continuously picks Elise is what Tabe was saying in his interview at the quarterfinals when he said, I didn't play very well, I got ganked a lot in lane. And it was buying Elise over and over and over again. So to have that on their team, that Tabe feels a little bit safer in that bottom lane. Yeah, l luckily he, he resorts reverts back to Elise quite a lot. It's one of his mm -hmm. core champions, um, so he'd be very comfortable with having Elise on his lineup. Um, it's interesting to see, though, how Peke can pull off this Ari. Some Aries have actually struggled. Faker's Ari was struggling for a while yeah. as well. So it's going to be interesting if Peke can step it up. It is as 
maybe you could say his first or second champion with Orianna there as well. Um, he does understand the matchup, but I think, I feel like White's going to have a little bit of an edge again in this laning phase. And I think this game hinges heavily on White's performance against Peke because I look at the godlike lane with Renekton, I don't think Soas is going to be winning that. I see Uzi being so safe on Ezreal and Pushu and Yellowstar and Ash Sour don't really historically dominate any lane. So unless Peke gets going, this is another one for Royal. Royal versus Fnatic. Royal up on one right now. This is a best of five coming in. Riv, Jat, and D-Man about to break it down. We are indeed about to break it down. You can see straight away, no sign of teleport once again from Fnatic. So they're not going for that tactic, keeping it in their pockets for when they really need it. And that's, that's, that's ballsy play straight away. So the reason I think Peke is going with Ignite right here is because when you bring Teleport, you're actually putting yourself in a little bit of a lane disadvantage to begin with. And since Fnatic lost the lane so badly last game, they might not even be able to get away with it in this match because it would just allow White's even more freedom against Peke That's in true. lane specifically. Let's see where they can go from this. Looks like they're all just going to be personal sentries. Actually, not too many wards being placed out here, but Fnatic will move power in numbers as they go hip to hip into the banana brush. And they're going to find Godlike, but I don't think they'll get too much out of it. No, he's going to back away from this one. Remember, they did go face to face in the first game. And actually, no kills were exchanged, despite the fact a lot of damage was traded back and forward. No focus this time, but Fnatic are going for that invade on towards Red and Royal are looking to maybe try and respond this. Yeah, but Royal's not grouped up anywhere. So if Fnatic did find one, they would at the very least burn a flash. So has, so has already used his slingshot. They go into the brush with that cooldown there. An instant cleanse on the grasping root. It's going to be a lot of damage. One or few more hits. Cyanide's going to try to grab the aggro, but it goes to Peke. Forced the flash already. That's going to be big for White mid lane, but it continues. Oh, it's no. continuing around the backside. Look, he's going to come in. He gets down to Soaz. Look, what? he may go down from this one. Is there going to be no, no hit? Yellow Star's in trouble. He's going to go down. Push is going to oh, go down. Oh my gosh. It's a double. It's a triple. It's disaster for Fnatic at level one. When Fnatic decided to dive the turret for Uzi, everyone needed to follow through. They got caught halfway through. So as started tanking the turret. But guess what? There's still a bunch of royal people in the jungle closing in on the rest of Fnatic. Two went one way, three went the other, and the fact that three people of Fnatic ran into a team on royal was absolute disaster. With the flashes down, everything that comes of this, it means Royal has advantage on the lanes to look for the kills. They even probably have enough time to back and put purchases in here. Starting with the Doran's ring, Peke is going to get himself some help, but he's also against White's Doran and two assists there. So in the laning phase, at least, because the kills were so delayed for Royal, they haven't bought significant items yet out of this one. The only big significant purchase was actually Peke's Crystalline Flask on top of whatever he's gotten early and the Spirit Stone from Lucky. 1,000 gold lead already for Royal Gaming. Just three minutes into this game, coming into lane phase. We did see the defensive ball being picked up by Whites there, actually using it to save Lucky's life. But that jungler of having 2-0-1 start will be immense on that at least. We saw him in the last game, how strong he can be in terms of coming in, ganking potential, hope, helping out that top lane with Godlike. That's going to surely cause problems for Soaz in the top lane. It's, it's going to play on the mentality. You go into a game and you're thinking, when is that first hit going to chip off the block? When are we going to be behind a little bit? And if it happens at two minutes, it weighs on your mind the entire time. We've seen teams win a game and still be stressed at the end. This would be one of those. Uzi taking some big damage, but they don't fully aggress. Fnatic already completely put on their back foot. And as we said, no teleports to try and recover here. Lucky trying to take those two kills and aggressively counter jungle Fnatic Cyanide. He's taken his uh -oh. race an inch away from where the red buff is being taken down as well. And already in the top lane, Godlike. He's farming between the lanes. So as is already feeling the pinch of that very first assault. Of course, remember, there's no passive available. That went down. Cell Division was used already. So he's got a timer on that one. And so as is going to be really careful. Meanwhile, just off to the right of the screen, we see Cyanide and Lucky fighting over the golem. So as is thinking of going aggressive here, dodges out. They're going to go in aggressive. A little bit of missed damage Ooh. there. Lucky very low. Does not have the repel in time. Whites is also fighting Peke in middle. Back and forth. The ignites go down. The damage is upped, but they will not find the kill on each other. The fact that the double buffs there were transferred re back to Cyanide is huge. Lucky pressed his luck a little too long there, trying to get in between the double golems. That time he landed his Q so as comboed, and Godlike was not in the right position 
because the top lane wave was in the wrong spot, and effectively, Lucky just got bursted down before Godlike could react. Potentially a little bit of over-aggression from Royal. Maybe the first time we've seen that one. Push shoot and Yellowstar under pressure in that bottom Ooh. lane. And again, Whites is going to be the target. Forced to flash away this time. And he will avoid it, but summon a spell burn. A good aggression there. And Cyanide actually kind of curbing what he usually does in that farm. And ganking a bit for Aatrox here. Peke was very low, though. They may try to reactivate that gank. But it does not work out as Fnatic. Weary. Cyanide absolutely helping out two of his solo lanes very early on in the game, something that he was not able to do successfully in the last one. I really like that Aatrox pick, capitalizing on Lucky's aggression. Look at this bottom lane though, the pressure being applied. 34 to 20 CS already between Uzi and Pushu. Big advantage there, Whites. 43 to 18 in this mid lane. White is dominating Peke once again in terms of farm. And you see Uzi taking those hits left and right. Few grasping roots here. Set it in the early game. They're just going to be able to heal that up with Sona already pushing down hard. 45 to 18 in that mid lane, but he has back for his second ring. So Peke may be able to make a play as he's going to be hitting six here within the next few minutes. Something Chabe actually did in this bottom lane as well is he got a multitude of mana potions early on in the game. And Sona's healing is generally gated by mana more than anything else, so that means that Uzi and Tabe can be more aggressive and take more hits. Ooh, Cyanide looking for a little bit too much there, and he gets pushed off of the front door. Yeah, so as is, is pushed that lane up, but again, it's it's lucky and God like feeling the pinch, pushing around, taking away everything from the jungle of Cyanide. And Cyanide, while he's been trying to be as aggressive as he can. He is getting caught out. They're going to go in, though. They're going to get Let's Bounce going down. Ultimate on towards Godlike. Hasn't hit Sin oh. yet. And, of course, the Bloodwell not available because he's Renekton. Just great timing right there by Fnatic. Renekton doesn't have the Bloodwell. Tricks on you right there. So has able to hit six first. Capitalize. And this solo lane comeback by Soaz is really huge because we look at Peke in the mid lane. He's dying to white seemingly 26 to 52 and it's all about so as in cyanide deja right now. vu here on the other side of the map this was just cyanide being pushed out of that double golems area now we get it down onto the side of royal and they're having a bit of trouble behind the turret we see two in the top lane still going strong the aggression in mid still coming from whites but he's taking damage in those trades well let's see how that aggression works out from cyanide hasn't gone back to buy yet just about popping back we'll see what he comes out with will it be a second door will he continue the aggression we do see whites heading in towards his bottom lane uh -oh. the bottom lane itself has been pushed heavily they're gonna go aggressive on push you he's gonna have to get away from this one grasping roots does come out stops Uzi in his tracks but that 3v1 dive he's coming yeah this bottom lane is not going well whatsoever for fanatic push is a level behind both Uzi and Tabe and that just pushed him straight back even though the last pick was Zyra, Royal knew exactly the lane they were going to be going up against because as soon as Fnatic picked Ash, Royal knew that it would be comboed with Zyra and that Sona Ezreal pick is a direct choice by Royal to go against and it is paying off 65 to 25. That is not even close. And Puju is usually somebody that comes up for his team and makes plays. You can see he has 1600 gold right now to the 2300 of Uzi and Puju's going utility on this one. Uzi getting pretty hurt and there it is wow. the final attack Boom. from Cyanide. The Ignite goes down and he actually runs off with that summoner spell. Wow. That was a very big surprise for Uzi. He had his flash up and he decided to not go away. I don't think he expected Cyanide to be level six or he underestimated his <laughs> burst potential because he's actually played against Aatrox before. Royal is an Aatrox team occasionally. That is just a great play by Cyanide and a rare misplay from Uzi. So Dragon gonna pick it up here. And, you know, it's the fact that Cyanide went back, got those boots and mobility, the double Dorans. We talked about what he was gonna build into. He's gone for the aggression and it's paid off right there. Three to zero right now. Cyanide, that's the Dragon for Fnatic. After a disastrous opening, when Fnatic gave up three kills, they have played nearly flawlessly throughout the rest of this. Even though they're losing in the laning phase, this is the game where Cyanide is stepping up. As you said, the boots of mobility are allowing him to make it into positions faster. Cyanide was in the right positions last game, he just wasn't making the plays on Lee Sin. He's making the plays this game on Aatrox, and it's a big reason Fnatic has been able to pull themselves back to an even game. Prepo was kind of talking about that on the analyst desk. These junglers fast, going for the early speed, that movement around the jungle play style instead of auras for the team, helping yourself out. Although Crumbs also said in his interview the auras are there in the late game. So the junglers are really taking a bigger role in this tournament than before. Speaking of junglers, we see again Lucky on that red buff, stole it away from Cyanide. So while Cyanide may be being the aggressive one, he is having his 
jungle stolen away from him, but we've got to talk about the farm because that is a devastating differential in that bottom lane. Uzi at 80 CS to push you 33. That is monstrous. Yeah, that is a problem. And now that the turret has gone down, how is Fnatic going to deal with Uzi and Tabe roaming around the map? Royal is a team that loves to just appear with four or five people and brute force down turrets. Uzi has the freedom to do that as well because he doesn't even have to worry about Pushu catching up and far. Yeah, we see that Pushu right now Whoa. trying to be full utility. Three Dorans in his build. Cyanide going quite hard onto Lucky. He finds him in the jungle. Will the spider be able to get out on this one? Peke picks himself up. A nice kill. The assist go around. The crescendo coming out onto Peke, and they may be able to get the shockwave. I'm not sure it's the right choice because Soaz has joined the party. Tabe is going to go down. It's feeding Peke. He kills. He's going to dodge out of this one. Can he get the third? No, he won't. It will go to Soaz. Blood oh, is available oh, for Cyanide. Uzi is in trouble. He's going to have to arc and oh. shift away from the arrow. And he will get out there, but that was another good fight for Fnatic. And oh. this just pulls the game even closer. It is Royal over farming and Fnatic over fighting right now. You can see Cyanide. Time the Lucky coming back down. Whites was waiting to find the right shockwave. And Peke in the crescendo, Whites didn't have his cooldowns to get the ball in position for that in time, which is why Peke was able to dodge away from it. And this is actually a little bit of greed right here from Peke. He shouldn't have went back in. He wanted to get more kills for himself since he is the carry. It cost him his life. And then yeah, over nope. the wall, Uzi it makes himself safe. So we have Godlike. Pressuring the turret after that, it did cause some commotion on the map, so we're going to see top lane getting pressured there. A good movement by Royal. They will grab a bit of that gold lead. It's only 600 right now. Last game, it was about 10,000 within the next nine minutes of the game. Well, it swung back and forward. It's been 1,000 to yeah. Royal, 1,000 back to Fnatic. Now we're heading back towards 1,000 to Royal because while that was all happening, Godlike stayed in the top lane, pushed down that turret, got themselves the second turret of the game. As of yet, Fnatic now yet to get close to touching those turrets. And there is an unrelenting farm advantage from Royal right now. 109 and 106, if we look at Whites and Uzi, to just 78 and an abysmal 53 from Pushu's Ash right now. Only the kills that are created by Cyanide and Fnatic's attempt to almost punish Royal for being so aggressive in their way of getting farmed is keeping Fnatic in this game. The lane problem that Fnatic had last game is not really being solved. They're barely keeping themselves in this one because Cyanide has been so impactful. And he is 51 Hello. and 36 CS, but he still comes out of the jungle. A great shockwave pulls him back, but it's Peke. The arrow flies across and it gets oh. the kill on Natabe. They look for Whites. They take him down as well. And another two now for nothing. Last one was a three for one. These are the picks that Fnatic put into their team composition. That is why they had Ash and Ari, because they can find the right team fights. And it is absolutely keeping them in this game. Well, we talked about the difference between Ariana and Ari, the picks, how it was going to work out. In terms of farm, don't get me wrong, Whites is staying miles ahead. Yeah. But Peke is getting going, and that is a danger sign for Royal Club right now. They will be able to create their pick soon. They have taken back the gold lead, D-Man, as you're saying, is swaying back and forth, and it's doing it every minute of the game. Ooh. Another noodle fight in the top here by Soaz, a godlike. Neither of these guys are taking each other down. But this time, <laughs> Soaz has the level advantage on godlike. It's a reversal of what we saw in the last match. The fact that Soaz is able to push Godlike in means Godlike can't roam around with the rest of Royal to create 5v4 team fights like he loves to do on Renekton so much. So let's have a look. I mean, let's not get wrong. Pushu is still being absolutely massacred in this bottom lane. It's not even close. To be at a double the CS at 120 to 62 is still enormous. And we know that Uzi is Royal's carry effectively. But if Baker can get going, which he is, mm -hmm. Deathfire Grass will be out soon. If he can land that charm on Uzi, he will go down very quickly. We can actually see Pushu and Wild Yellowstar just a few seconds ago, that True Shot Barrage passing through their two-man Fnatic brush try. They try to get their own gank in. You can see him. They are trying to make moves. Like Ocelot said, the one thing I've learned from this tournament is you have to be able to make moves and go in when you even think it's wrong. Well, at this point, Fnatic can't make any mistakes because right. Even though they're out killing Royal, Royal is the ones with excessive farm advantages. So if Royal gets any kills back, they're going to close out a lot Quick. of large bounties from Fnatic and jump even farther ahead. Knowing that Uzi has cleanse on Ezra right now, there's no good way Whoa. for Fnatic to actually lock them down. They're trying to catch them. So Fnatic actually has to kill everyone else but Uzi because I don't think he's a realistic focus target. And if Uzi gets too far ahead, he's going to crush Fnatic. 
Not oh, Fnatic grouping up for this one, but Royal Club are ready this time around. So as was looking around the side, maybe they think it coming in. Royal going for that full five-man defense. Dragon up in two seconds' time. This could be our first big battle. Everyone has roamed down at this point. There is a pretty big edge here. So is his level 11, whereas Godlike is level 10. So oh! That, oh, oh, steal. And that is also very huge. Having double blue buff on Royal gives them a lot of extra coolant in this fight, which is bound to happen. Sign at the very least will go for a steal. I'm watching for the shockwave on this one. Where's the... Oh, no! He missed it the missed. shock! They go for Cyanide. They keep going down. Whites is all over him. The dragon has not yet gone down, but he's dealing some DPS. Godlike finds the hit, but they continue the fight. They continue to go round, and so is round the backside. Gets down Uzi. This could could be an ace for Fnatic. They're closing down towards Whites. Tabe is there as well. There's no dragon, so they're going to keep on pushing this one. Tabe is going to get slowed down. The Elastic Sting Shot, the red buff, doing its work. Who are they going <laughs> to give the kill to? They need to give it to Pushu. He needs to get fed. They get him. Ari, meanwhile, he's chasing. Peke is on to Whites. Whites finally backs away. It's a four for one exchange. Dragon did go across. I tell a lie, it didn't even no. get touched. It ran right back to its pit because the fight just distracted from it. Fnatic got the Good fight there because Soaz was level 11, two godlikes level 10. Fnatic was stronger overall in fights, and Uzi wasn't an issue. Because the charm landed early on Uzi, it took him out of the fight. And then White, with a huge mistake on Orianna, did not combo on any of Fnatic's dives. Fnatic spread out very well in that fight, so even if White would have landed the Shockwave, it only would have been on one person. And then the repetitive dive from Soaz was able to finish off Uzi in the very end. Fnatic did everything right in this fight and really chased Royal down. It punished Royal for having so much focus on Orianna and the rest of Fnatic just chased down. That Orianna ball, especially with three members of Fnatic able to jump out the delivery system has to be on a person. It can't be a skill shot ultimate. I'm sure Whites has got that in his mind for the next fight at 13 to five. Finally, a bit of a more than a thousand gold lead coming in here for Fnatic. 16 minutes in, f four minutes from now, Royal took Baron last game. It's a completely different game. And talking about gold, you know, Uzi has got that farm, 150 CS, but he's 0 3 1. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you look at it, it's only, what, 600 gold difference between Pushu, despite the fact he had that enormous CS advantage still because he's 2 1 4, because they started feeding him those kills in that fight. And I really have to credit a lot to Soaz is Zach in this game. He's two levels ahead of Godlike and one and a half thousand gold ahead as well as wearing these double buffs. He's the thing that is in the way and effectively blocking a lot of Uzi's mystic shots to shut him down in these team fights. He's the second diver that is helping the rest of Fnatic come and win a lot of these fights as they have been up 13 kills to five. It's like Fnatic's getting pinched into their own mid. This is being forced in, the crescendo comes out, the shockwave hits, and they obliterate Peke down. The barrel comes across, Ooh. oh, it splits the uprights and they're not able to get anything out of it. This they is continue into the turret. This is not a good fight for Fnatic. They're gonna have to back away from this one. That's two kills down now. And they say, you called it right at the start. They simply locked them up. Aggressive play coming out from Tabai with that flash crescendo. Pushu trying to catch up on farm there and Royal does does not care about people in turrets. If they have more than you, they will dive the turret, and that is royal execution. They're gonna keep pushing this. This is big for them. We saw this happen in the SKT game. Can they go all the way to the inhibitor here with a quick push? They have one second on Pe Peke. He does, he does have home guards. He grabs those quite early. He'll be able to help defend on the inhibitor. Wow, so two towers picked up from Roy. We talked about the aggression. We talked. I was mentioning it in game one. Even when they were a 10k lead, they weren't going diving. Now they're even on gold. They're just getting oh. straight in there. They know how to get back in this game. It's the way they get back in the games. Is they group up as five and they force fights. And even though Fnatic was Whoa. spread out, <laughs> Peke might get a little bit of revenge as well. Even though Fnatic was spread out in that last fight, White's used his shockwave on one and the finish off Peke. I guess it was worth it because if you don't finish off Peke, he's going to just go and kill you. So. I'm interested who got the actual shutdown gold there. I think it was Whites because there was a lot of people. There was Cyanide who had barely been touched. Peke was barely been touched. And both of them went down in that fight. There was a lot of gold transferred across the wall. We do see Fnatic taking their first turret of the game in that mid lane. Uzi is the one who got Soaz's killing spree in the last fight, Ooh. which is fairly large for him. The only kill of the game that he's been able to pick up. And despite Uzi's giant farm advantage, he's Ooh. been held back. Fnatic looking for fights. They are doing the pick game. Here it comes once again. Godlike looking to get himself out of this one. Feels like he can waltz it out. Tabe's there to help, but Tabe might have gotten himself into the I think I can situation. They have to throw down Dominus, and they walk out of this. 
And now all of Royal is trying to put up a counterattack, but their big tank in Renekton is gone, which means if Pushu lands an arrow, there is no real defense to stop the rest of Fnatic coming in. Fnatic are looking to create a situation. Of course, that top turret could be the focus, but where are Royal going? Are they going to try and transfer this one? Pushu and Soaz heading towards that top. They need to shove this wave in. They need to start getting those turrets, more importantly, because they are slowly but surely, despite they're winning the Guerrilla Warfare at 15-8, they are starting to be pushed into their own base. And it is very rare that the team that gets substantially outfarmed, as we've seen Uzi over Pushu and Whites over XPK, and destroyed on turrets, at one point it was four turrets to one, has a chance, even the slightest of hopes of winning. It's only because Fnatic has forced so many good team fights that they've been able to stay in this game. But the trend is still in the favor of Royal because they have the ability to take more map control. As soon as they get any shutdown bonuses, they can crush back. And there's a reason that they were able to have so much lane dominance and push in. It's because generally their champions are stronger when they're fighting. And right now, a fight win means so much more. So much more of the map is open. Fnatic, semi lanes push, they win a fight and we see them backing. We don't see them pushing turrets or anything. Not really gaining too much advantages off of what they have, but they have, again, grabbed back the gold lead that is swayed a handful of times already, and it still will. And, you know, talking about that gold lead, the advantage the AD carries have. Because Uzi had such a dominant lane, he's now got himself a Triforce and a Last Whisper. Because Pushu was in so much trouble, he had to get that triple Doran's Blade. Now he's finally completed the Infinity Edge. But he's behind in builds. Way behind. Pushu is pretty much just his Ash Arrow and a little bit of backline support. That's okay for Fnatic, because they are a solo lane focused team. It just pushes more onto Soaz and Peke. I like the fact that Soaz went with Mercury Treads on Zac and the Haunting guy. So he gets the magic penetration, but he still has the tenacity to move through the team fights. It's something that during previous rounds of World Championships, Zax did not do. Fnatic, though, looking for a fight. Dangerous situation, though. Soaz is not with them yet. He's coming in very late into this fight, and if Royal had have gone for it. If they'd had vision, they're going to pull the shockwave. They crush it down. The crescendo follows after one after the other. They get the consecutive crowd control. And it is going to be a first kill coming up quick. Cyanide Yellow Star is down, but Tabe follows quickly. They still go on to Soaz, but he is going to be able to run this one out for his team. Back to the fight, and it's Peke getting a kill for himself. No, Puju picks that up. Peke's on the Whoa. ignite. The charm goes out, and he lives. Absolute crazy aggression coming out from this one. Pushing with the ignite. He saves himself with the barrier just off the side there. Soaz oh. gets a kill down. Lucky comes back in. Back and forward action. It was a four for three fight though, and it actually went in favor of Fnatic just. And that's the perfect explanation of how this entire game is going right now. Let's take a look at how this happened. The Shockwave comboed with Tabe's Crescendo seemed to wipe out Fnatic, wow. but that was only their support and their jungle. Plus, Sinon has revive passive up, so it meant Fnatic could still launch a counterattack. And this is how far ahead Soaz is. While Godlike is dying to Pekka and Pushu, Soaz is taking on two and a half people of Royal. Uzi actually gives up on Soaz and then rushes for Peke. Peke surprised Uzi a bit oh. by flashing with his Spirit Rush, and then Pushu was far enough back that he could counter onto Uzi once he came in. Soaz, the monster that he is, finished off another kill, and Lucky finally ate up the pieces at the end. And look at this, we're back at it again. The dragon is up, everybody settles themselves, and it seems that we're gonna have another party in the dragon pit. The rest of Fnatic starting to position themselves as our Royal. And Fnatic actually needs this fight to happen in about 15 seconds. They need Zax ultimate to be up because right now Royal has Shockwave and Redaction Alt. If Royal fought right now, they would have an edge. They throw the two-shot barrage through. Not too much is going to be followed. Oh, it's there. the arrow to Godlike. The arrow onto Godlike. Will it be the right focus? Look, he's taken low at the side there. We also see Fnatic peeling off. They know Let's Bounce is still not available, which is why they're trying to delay this fight as much as possible. Tabe Crescendo not going to be up for this fight, and you can see the hesitation coming into the battle. Whoa. Another missed shockwave by Whites. They're going to try and catch on. Sinai doesn't land that slow, and everybody disengages <laughs> ever so slowly. Everybody calm down here. There's nothing happening. <laughs> Let's Bounce is up, but nobody wants to party with Soas at this point. That's why Royal was flying away right now. And because of that, Royal's trying to take a little bit of Baron control. But guys, this game is ridiculously close. Six, eight, three, th or 30,600. Wow, that's not a number. 37,000 gold to 35,000 gold. Those are real numbers. Let's work with those. We can see Soaz completely changing his game around. It, for that last game, it was like, wow, the mechanical skill in each lane is just far surpassing, but not the story coming into this one. Everybody's matched up or beat their lane now on Fnatic. And the reliance for Uzi right now, he's still at 146. He's not getting those kills. They are going to whites and 
4-1-6 push you. Despite how badly yeah. he did in lane, he's still being given he's the kills. We there. saw that great play just up towards the end of that fight. The barrier saving him from the ignite and just about holding on in there. And still, 19-11, Fnatic holding on with their kill score. They still can't get towers down. Every time they hit this fight, there's nothing left to push a tower. <laughs> and Peke's Ari build is actually a little bit odd. He just now finished a DFG, but that was after having a Seeker's Arm Guard. He's making sure to build a little bit of defensive itemization because he knows how quickly Uzi and Whites are willing to trade damage back on him and how quick-fingered Tabe is with those crescendos. So if Peke gets caught in one, he doesn't want to instantly die. And I think that's actually one of the things that's allowed Peke to stick around in some of these fights. Like that last four for three we had, he was at a sliver when Uzi was chasing him down. He's definitely keeping his mind on how can I get kills. And in fact, I think he got the return on investment. As soon as he bought those home guards after the mid fight we saw, he got that kill on whites in mid instantly. So he knows what he needs to be doing from step to step, setting the chess pieces in place. But right now, four turrets down, vision lost on the side of Fnatic with a gold lead means they definitely are on the edge of going in the same way of last game. And there's a bunch of loaded gold that's willing to swing just based on the results of the next team fight. So if Fnatic wins a decisive team fight, since the turrets are so non-destructed right now on Royal's side, Fnatic would get thousands of global gold right after a team fight. But if Royal wins a decisive team fight, since they've already taken the turrets, it's actually kill bounties that Fnatic have accumulated. This game is actually going to swing or break, probably with the first next fight. Check the pressure once again. Oh, Fnatic man. with the cyanide and Ooh. push you. Look at just, just look. Cyanide, he really Everybody's about holding it. their breath. <laughs> I think they know they were there, though. They're, so they're both, they were trying to push the top lane again. They're trying to get the towers down, but every time they do it, Royal just find the pressure point, and they're going to oh. catch on top of it. Oh, and Mr. Grasping, they throw up the strangle thorn, though, and they could go Celeste. in. The true shopper has coming through the fight. Tabe down. Can they continue to go? Cyanide's about to come up, and Lucky's going down. Godluck's trying to take all that front damage tower. He does get Cyanide down. So far, it's just a one for one. Pushu and Uzi going at it right now. Look, he's going to have to back away from this fight. It's Uzi trying to pin the damage down. Everybody, once again, steps away from the fight. Just one kill apiece. And these fights are so close. Soaz and Cyanide are basically sacrificing themselves just to push back Uzi from the rest of Fnatic Squishies. But Godlike is doing the same thing on Renekton. Full tank right now. He's not even building a Sunfire Cape because Royal's only objective right now is keep people away from Whites and Uzi. It's one of the big reasons these fights are so low kill, at least that last one. Are they triple pushing right now? Trying to get all these lanes up? Zyra in the top lane, Yellowstar doing what he can with plants. They're trying to get everything in their advantage. Yeah, that top lane, they've tried three times to go up there to push it out. Finally, Pushu is like, right, okay, I'm going to go in the bottom. I'm going to get the farm here. And Yellowstar's like, well, I used to be an AD carry. I can push a lane. Yeah, but with all that being considered, it's actually Royal who always has the upper Whoa. hand around the Baron Pit. It is denying Fnatic Vision, and since Pushu was off to the side, this is a dangerous opportunity. 50-50 once again. Can Cyanide jump in and steal it? The arrow is not up. There is the Hawk shot to give him Vision. Tommy, no. very low. It does not get stolen. Cyanide forced to flash out, but the slice and dice follows, and they may back off on this one. That was the Baron for the Royal Club, though. Are we going to see Soaz going in? He hasn't gone. Let's bounce. There's going to be the ignite. So they got the arrow catches on towards White's. The damage on towards Lucky. Can they get any picks off here? Godluck's still in there. Locking down Peke. They're going to try and turn the damage to the rest of Royal Club. Don't come around. And Uzi is going to be a huge factor in this fight. He puts himself in the front. Cleanses off the damage. The Baron buff is ticking on Royal and they are going to head Fnatic into their own base. So as of course, he just, he has got Flash available. We didn't have Let's Bounce available throughout that entire fight. Peke did go down to Uzi again. The goal heading back towards that AD carry could be vital. Another Crazy aggressive call right there by Royal. Lucky smites absolute faith in himself, but it's just a 50-50. Royal does not care, and now with the Baron and a 5v4, they're getting an inhibitor. Deja vu for Royal. They are coming in very strong, very early in this best of five. They seemingly win every lane to come in strong, and Puju gets crescendo. We see a dancing Ash, but is it going to be enough? So as his let's bounce, he's now available. Tabe's going to get locked down. He's catching oh. the rest of the team. There's going to be a lock up on Lucky. We're going to see the catch on towards him. So as Teke will be up in one second time, but it is Uzi cleaning up right now. Here comes the home guard, Peke. Can he get the damage down on the right target? No, Uzi's going to turn it back onto him. Can he get to the foul? And Uzi's still chasing in the Baron Bus going to keep him strong. And Royal, as they do with Baron Buff, trying to take down Nexus turrets. One turret goes down. Now, yes, they do get it. Uzi's up in the front. He's low on mana. Royal is looking to end this game now. 
Wow, just what a turnaround right here. The Shockwave pops That's it. in. They get the kill. They get the Nexus. And Royal Club go 2-0. Can you believe it? The play.